Welcome to Fowler's Facts. We bring on our staff statistician, Clinton Fowler, to dive into the numbers. This will be the Hayden Deegan edition. I feel like we've seen rookies win in this series before, but you're diving into the numbers. Yes, it does happen, but when it does, they are luminaries. They are legends that do this. Indeed, Weege. Hayden Deegan is now the 21st employee to win a moto, seven motos into his career. And he's amongst some of the greats. You look at the, the folks that have won multiple races at the top. You got Bob Hanna, won the first five of seven motos in the small bike class, pretty impressive. Not surprisingly, you see guys like Ricky Carmichael, Grant Langston's up there. And then of course your, your broadcast partner, James Stewart with three of seven. But Weege, the thing that really sticks out for me is looking through the 21 people. Not a lot have won in the last 10, even 20 years. And so the guys that show up, Eli Tomac won one in 2010, Dylan Ferrandis in 2017, Hunter Lawrence in 2019, but they only won one moto. So it just doesn't seem like it's a, it's a normal thing these days. JT, I wanna ask you about that. I've heard a lot of teams and riders say that with 250Fs, they're faster, they're heavier, they're more powerful than the bikes used to be back in the day. And you're not going to see rookies do this. And even Ferrandis getting in the list, look, he had raced MXGP for years before he got that in his rookie year in America. So people were saying, you're not gonna see this anymore. JT, we just saw it. I wasn't the one saying this. <laughs> uh, if you look at the level of involvement from the OEM side, getting younger and younger, right? They're they're on really good equipment early on. And, and we have to also think, Aiden Deegan was on a Super Mini a year and a half ago, which he mentioned on the podium. But I think the bikes are so capable now. And when I look back, to go really fast on a 125, in my opinion, was much more difficult because you had a power band, they were slower, you really had to think about how to get the most amount of power out of the motorcycle and carry momentum. These 250s are easier to ride. Yes, they're faster and heavier, but they, in simply, they're easier to ride. They're easier to go faster on. So. You can break that down however you want. I just don't, I don't buy into the narrative that it's going to be tougher and, and more difficult for younger guys to go fast. If anything, I think these bikes allow you to go much faster, much earlier. Okay, interesting. Yeah, we have not seen it as much. And I even want to say Hannah winning it, it might have been in the all-time sensation of the sport when he broke through. They literally had t-shirts at the track back in the 70s that said, <laughs> who the hell is Bob Hanna? Because it was such a shock for him to come out and win those five of the first seven at still the all-time mark. And I know, Clinton, it's not just the fact that Deegan did this, but it's also how he did it that you want to analyze here. Yeah, Hayden Deegan's racecraft at Hangtown in that first moto was impressive. It just seemed like that of a veteran. And so you look at the beginning, he got an amazing hole shot out to an early lead. He set some blistering fast laps in the first three laps. They were the fastest of those laps. And then he rode within himself for multiple laps. That gave Justin Cooper, though, the ability to catch back up. But maybe the most impressive part for me is on lap 15, with two laps to go, Justin Cooper with him one second, and he lays down a lap time that's 1.4 seconds better than Justin Cooper at the end of the race. The response there to me is just that of a veteran. Um, and just, you know, JT, when I look at that, it's like, he managed the race beautifully right from the start all the way to that second to last lap. And so just really impressive maturity and racecraft out of Hayden Deegan. Yeah. The, the early laps for me, not a surprise, right? These, these kids are groomed and that's what they train for as amateurs is to sprint early and as fast as possible for a few laps. And a lot of these amateur races, the race would be over by then, but let's think about, he only had six, pro motocross motos to his credit at that point going into that moto so for him to be that strong to be able to answer the bell just like you mentioned late in the moto and and i believe that's what justin cooper was trying to accomplish he wanted to get him into the deep water late in the moto and then see what he's got and i thought that hayden deegan did a fantastic job of answering there dropping his lap time and i think if you asked justin cooper in his most honest moment he would have been surprised too at what hayden deegan was able to do there late yeah cooper in the press conference even said he thought that he might fade or make a mistake and he was just kind of settling in and he said i gotta give him credit he was strong to the end no doubt he's fit uh i just one other thing it's not just the rookie it's the age situation here so what do you see when you dive into a 17 year old doing this so soon yeah, Weege, he's, from from what I can tell, it looks like he's the 12th youngest to win a moto. 
Um, Brock Glover actually being the youngest by three days with Robbie Bernard, uh, the second youngest. But I mean, the list I look at it, it young ages. I mean, you got James Stewart and Ron Lachine, Travis Pastrana, Ricky Carmichael, Jet Lawrence, just a few months younger than him. So again, back to that, you know, the top point we made, he's just amongst some impressive names this early in his career. But one other stat I want you to throw out. So Deegan wins in his seventh moto ever in this class. How many did it take for Jet to get one? It took Jet a fair amount more, guys. It took Jet 22 motos to get to his first one. So he's, he's progressing pretty nicely. All right. We'll see how that bodes well for the future. We could be looking at Lawrence family versus Deegan family all over this thing for a long, <laughs> long time. This is just a start. Thanks, Clinton. It's great to chat, guys. Okay, we're going to wrap this show up. Keep on watching this weekend. We'll have more live coverage of Pro Motocross on Peacock. It starts with Race Day Live, presented by Motosport.com at noon Eastern. And then 3 Eastern, we will start four and a half hours of moto coverage. Again, on Peacock, I'll be there. Jason will be there. And James Stewart will join us in the booth. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.